Historically, the fear of overpopulation has deeply shaped our imagination. As the world's population exploded in the 20th century, many believed disaster was inevitable. In the 1960s, apocalyptic warnings predicted the poor would procreate endlessly and overwhelm the developed world, what became known as the legend of overpopulation. This view traces back to economist Thomas Malthus, who argued that the population growth would outpace food supply. His ideas resurfaced in 1968 when biologist Paul Paul Ehrlich published The Population Bomb, warning of mass starvation. Through the 1970s, with famines and unrest, many believed he was right, and governments enacted policies to curb growth. This is the Malthusian view. Population grows faster than resources, and collapse is inevitable. But others disagreed. Economist Julian Simon, representing what's called the Cornucopian view, argued that people aren't just mouths to feed, they're also problem solvers. In 1980, he bet Ehrlich $1,000 that the price of key resources would fall, not rise, over the next decade. Ten years later, Simon won. The lesson was clear. Famine and scarcity are not just about numbers, but about inequality, access, and innovation. Modern voices like Elon Musk even warn humanity could crumble into decline if we don't have enough children. So are there too many people or not enough? The real story is more complicated, and it starts with the four stages of something called the demographic transition. The demographic transition is a four-stage process that shows how populations grow and change as societies develop. Stage 1. High birth rate and death rates kept populations small, limited by poor sanitation, diets, and medicine. Stage 2. With the Industrial Revolution, better food, hygiene, and medicine lowered deaths while births stayed high, causing a population boom. Stage 3. As living standards and education, especially for women, improved, birth rates fell and growth slowed. Stage 4. Eventually, both birth and death rates stabilized at low levels, leading to stable or even declining populations. This transition didn't just happen in the UK. It's a global phenomenon. While developed countries like Britain took about 80 years to reduce fertility, others are catching up much faster. Bangladesh, for instance, reduced its average number of children per woman from 7 in 1971 to 2.2 in 2015. To visualize these shifts, demographers use a tool called the Population Pyramid, a graph that shows a country's population by age and gender. The shape tells an immediate story. In much of Africa, the pyramid has a wide base, with a huge share of young people. As they grow up, the population is almost guaranteed to keep doubling. By contrast, Europe's pyramid is narrow at the base and weighted toward older ages, showing low birth rates and an aging society. Many countries there are already shrinking. These pyramids don't just show the present, they reveal where populations are headed and the challenges each region will face. If birth rates keep falling, why is the world's population still growing? The answer is momentum. The massive generation during the boom years is still having kids, but far fewer, about 2.5 today versus 5 just 40 years ago. In fact, the UN predicts the 12 billionth human may never be born. The concern now isn't overpopulation, but underpopulation. Many countries are well below the replacement rate of 2.1 children per woman. Even India, the most populous nation, peaked 25 years ago and births are already down 20%. This creates a birth gap. In Italy, for example, a million people will retire in the next 20 years, but fewer than 400,000 children are being born to replace them. Germany and Spain face similar trends, straining pensions, healthcare, and entire economies. And the biggest reason isn't families choosing one child, it's people choosing none. More men and women delay parenthood due to careers, costs, or uncertainty. But when it's delayed too long, many end up having fewer kids than planned or none at all. So, are there too many humans on Earth? The evidence suggests that was yesterday's question. We're not heading for a population explosion. The trend is towards stabilization, even decline. And life today is dramatically better than in the past. In 1800, nearly half of children died before age 15. Today, it's under 4%. In 1900, life expectancy was 32 years. Now now it's over 73. Access to food, clean water, and medicine has soared. Most of us can walk into a store with thousands of choices unthinkable a century ago. Technology and innovation have lifted billions from poverty. In 1980, 4 in 10 people lived in extreme poverty. Today, it's less than 1 in 10. People aren't just mouths to feed. They're problem solvers, builders, innovators. The real challenge isn't population size, but how we manage our shared planet. Scarcity now comes more from inequality and mismanagement than nature's limits. 
Replacing unsustainable systems, ensuring fair access, and empowering future generations are key. The future of humanity isn't doom, it's potential. At Forever Green, we believe that by advancing climate justice, equality, and sustainable technologies, we can create a greener, healthier, and more equitable world, no matter our numbers. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something. Please subscribe and join our community. Thank you for watching.